Hi everyone, I'm in a new province and I just finished up the league with Racer Man's Ratlock. It always feels good to be the control. As always, you can pick apart your opponent's board in whatever match you want by clicking on the timestamp in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching and enjoy the league. Match one, game one with Ratlock. We won the die roll. We're going to play first. Let's play it real fast because this is a slow deck. We have two untapped mana, so if we find like a an interactive spell off this preordain this is actually a really good hand um we can even evoke a mole drifter pretty fearlessly holding priority on our upkeep uh <laughs> yeah no that's a good idea <laughs> to take that stop off that's uh that is not conducive to the fast playing <laughs> funless beer okay so we're gonna bottom a mole drifter top a disfigure um and that's awesome because we have the swamp in our hand and yeah we'll just have six Since you can flicker at instant speed, yeah. So it'll be on their draw step, but I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that out for the moment. All right. So our opponent's just playing an island and passing. Um, I don't know if I want to commit black mana here. I might, um, even though it's a little slow. I kind of like to get a Demir Aqueduct down, but I want to leave up this disfigure, so I'm gonna play a swamp. Depending if it's like Kiln Fiend or something like that, they might play a Kiln Fiend. If it's Delver, they might play a Delver or something. You know that whole. That whole shebang. If it's like a silver control deck, then it would have been a lot better to commit a tap land there, but that's okay. Yep, looks like a control deck. So now we're basically going to play tap lands for the rest of our lives. And maybe we're up against the mirror. Maybe this is a mirror ratlock match. We're drawing just lands. I don't think I'm ready to start evoking mole drifters yet. Fighting over mole drifters is how these games kind of start and end. <laughs> The cool thing about instance, you actually cast them at any time. It's two times the fast. So fast. Not playing tap lands on turn one and turn two. Yeah, it's it's kind of just like depending. So if they were Delver and they commit a like a fairy or something like that, I want to be efficient with my mana just in case I drew something else to do, like a cantrip or like a Seagate Oracle or something. Um so I could kill it with a Disfigure on their turn, but now that I know they're a slower deck, it probably wasn't the correct play. Although we are kind of live to do whatever now. Um, so yeah, we played Dismal Backwater. We'll see how they play out their next couple of turns. We might wait until we can defend this Mole Drifter with a counter spell, but for now we're just going to keep passing. And next turn, upkeep, draw, main, combat, main, to end. I don't know. <laughs> this is the mirror, oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, I should probably be playing a lot faster if this is going to be the mirror. Okay, so it looks like our opponent's holding up counter magic. I'm going to um, Aqueduct back one of our Dismal back... Oh, no, actually. So we'll play another Dismal backwater and pass the turn. Like I said, we're going to build our way up to 7 mana until we can cast this counter spell and a Mole Drifter in the same turn. Uh, I don't know what their win con is. If it's the same win con, I'm happy to have as much interaction in my hand as possible when we do decide to start doing stuff. Uh, the disadvantage this deck has, especially if it's the mirror, is that we don't have anything like Mystical Teachings or Forbidden Alchemy to do to, like, force on their turn. Um, yeah, so we're now we're going to play the see who can resolve the first Mole Drifter game, um, which is kind of funny. So we're going to cycle this Baron more, because we don't need it. We'll see if we have to hold up counter ma we, we are going to hold up counter magic, but... We'll Dismal Backwater back this Swamp, and then next turn that'll get us up to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 mana to try to power through a Mole Drifter. <laughs> yeah, only some amount of years later. So yeah, so we should try to play as, about as quickly as possible. Let's see what our opponent wants to do. Teachings. So I don't think this is the Mirror, or is this just Alchemy? I don't really want to counter Alchemy. I don't think it matters that much. Like, we can still answer uh, a Gurmog Angler. I think that's what they're lining up to do here. What if resolving Mully D resolves or results in decking out? Then we will certainly not be casting a self lethal self lethal Mully D. Alright, alright, we gotta go into focus mode. It's gonna be one of those matches. So here comes Gurmangler. Just Augur. Augur doesn't really matter here. Like I said, we're gonna use these to force through Mull Drifters, so. We'll let their auger resolve. These can also fight against uh, Gurmag Anglers. So if we fight over a Gurm Angler this turn, which I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they can play Angler with uh, counter backup, but we should still be able to counter it. 
Yeah, they have Forbidden Alchemy. They should deck first. True, true. All right, so time to fight over a Mull Drifter, I think. So, nah, maybe not. Maybe we just start doing this as well. We have so much backup that we might as well develop our mana base until we're absolutely going to win that counter war. We know they have a counter spell in hand, so we don't really want to run something important into four blue mana, so they're wisely going to let us cantrip as well. Wow, this is like the worst Seagate Oracle I think I've ever played. Um, we're just going to pass a couple of counter spells up. If they try to alchemy here or something, or if they try to uh, teachings here or something, I could imagine a world where I might want to counter, but I don't really know what it would get that would matter. They're just going to alchemy again. Okay, cool. It's the fish guy. Yeah, they probably have a fish. And they're gonna try to force it through. They have counter in hand. We have two counters to answer it, and uh, we're gonna, we're okay getting in a fight at pretty much any point where it'll allow us to resolve a mold drifter. Disfigure not gonna do anything. Um, we have three dead doom blades in our deck now, which is relevant to hit the millionth land. Oh, you did though. <laughs> kind of surprising, like because we are cheating on our mana with our Karoos here. Like we only have twenty two lands in this deck, which is pretty standard for for your uh for your demir decks right i'll counter a kicked probe too just more augers sure i mean not really sure kind of sucks but okay they don't have double counter spell up here so it might be time might be time to get some uncle cracker going drift away here which is still it's not as good considering like oh they're gonna whiff on auger that's good so only seven cards in my opponent's hand <laughs> Um, but I feel like we're going to get to resolve a, a Mull Drifter, and it's going to eat one of their removal spells, which is pretty good for us. Opponent also playing very slowly. There's Ghostly Flicker. Okay, so, which is pretty sweet, actually. Uh, so yeah, so let's cast a Mull Drifter. One, two, three, four, five. I think that's how we want to do it, right? I think so. Like, I don't feel like they can have two counters up here, so let's play Mull Drifter. I think this might give them an opportunity to cast their own. Unfortunately, 17 lands or 30, doesn't matter. True. So here comes Counterspell. We are going to try to counter back. Um, hopefully this uh, this helps it resolve. These matchups in Popper feel very much like the person that resolves the most Mull Drifters wins. No counter war. <laughs> Well, we have more Mull Drifters too, right? So we'll get to a point where like, we'll just have drawn into so much stuff that we can just cast all the Mull Drifters we want. Sure. Sorry, yeah, fair number of Sirens going around here tonight. So if they resolve a Mulder for now, we'll disfigure it, and uh, and then we'll just cast another one. They they're not developing their mana as well as we are, which is fortunate. But I feel they were going to tap out for one a couple of turns ago, so I feel like one is going to come down. And no, it's not because we have lots of mana to do what we want to do. Ideally, we'll be able to force through another Mulder Drifter and leave up this ghostly flicker. Um, Gurm Daddy. Okay, we don't currently have an answer for that, so that's relevant. So this is what they were tapping out for a <laughs> hundred turns ago. Thank you, Joel. Appreciate that, bud. Means a lot. All right, so here comes some augers. Gonna let us get a little bit of value off of this uh, disfigure. Um, yeah, I'm gonna disfigure now, just in case my opponent has a disfigure as well. Um, that way they can't like just while well, this has one damage assigned to it, they can't trade a disfigure for it too. And I'm okay getting off this off the battlefield because of how many chainers edicts we run which I may eventually need to use to kill this Gurmog Angler. Just a million more lands on deck. Going to be sort of like that today. So let's play a land. I feel like this is going to be another one of those um, counter spell, removal spell type of turns for our opponent. Um, so let's go one, two, three, four, five. Try to cast another Mull Drifter. We have counter magic to protect it here. We might want to just leave up Ghostly Flicker. Like if they if they let this through, then we're just going to leave up Ghostly Flicker, um, which they which they will have then have counter magic for. But mm -hmm. 
So I'm going to soul manipulation. We really don't want that to resolve. Um, so <laughs> let's, yeah, let's hope they don't have a counter spell for it here. They did show us hard counter, but they've used it. Ooh, they have the second counter. That's pretty bad. Um, so they're going to get back Augur, Bolas, and get our Mole Drifter. That was a pretty good turn for them. Yep. And we just have a Flicker and a Doom Blade. And they're getting back Augurs of Bolas and stuff. Um, we might find a Preordain off of this, so I'm going to do this now. I don't think it's worth removing an Augur of Bolas, just more Doom Blades. Sweet. And Doom Blade. Pretty good here. Yeah, our opponent had the other had two very good counter spells in hand there, so it is what it is. We could have evoked no, I, like evoking Muldrifter doesn't really help there either. So opponent's gonna get back there. They're gonna play their auger here. Thank you so much for the sub, Demir. Thank you. Five months and counting. Getting up to epic proportions here. Getting up to epic level sub quality. So probe actually isn't a huge deal. Like the the reason this is bad is because they get to just draw two or draw three cards, um, and have a deeper look at another win condition while we're still digging for a way to kill this. Because it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, Doomblade and land. <laughs> they matter so much. Um, no, I'm gonna need to kill this because like if we don't if we don't kill these then our opponent has the opportunity to, uh, our opponent can just sack them instead of sacking this. <laughs> no doubt, Skippy, what's up? I saw the video a while ago from Reddit of your Rakdos Popper deck. Yeah, man, that was a good little while ago. You've been hanging out. How you doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah, I, just, I should just probably play faster here. <laughs> Joel, man, what's up? <laughs> I like the emoji talk. Oh, that's pretty cool. Okay, so... Hmm. Uh, this Archaeomancer doesn't do anything yet. Like, it can buy back Counterspell. Seems pretty awful. And then we expose it to removal. Like, I guess we can start flickering our Dismal Backwaters and stuff. Um, I think I do run out Archaeomancer here for Ponder. Yeah, Doomblades fail. So I'm going to Archaeomancer for Ponder. We're trying to hit a Chainer's Edict here. Oh, I haven't... Oh, man. Bazooka Bog on turn one. Dang it. I knew I had cast a Ponder. But anyway, we'll just grab a Counter Spell here. That's fine, too. So we know we can... Yeah, we're going to grab Counter Spell. <laughs> Doom Blades fail. Um... So that we can counter some of the removal. And while there's shields, I, I think I might just leave it like this. We'll try to ghostly flicker this in response. Um go to blocks and ghostly flicker and just hope hope things work out with the little bit of interaction we've got here. Of course, they could always just like point removal at it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they can flashback chainers edict. We have a counter magic for it. Or they could just like send two removal spells at it. <laughs> yeah, it did though. So there's Augur, sure. It's not great for us, but it is what it is. Another whiff? Man, our opponent is not getting good Augur luck today. Five untapped mana. It's a little sketchy. Disfigure. That really sucks. So. Yep, they're going to go to combat. Go to attacks. I feel like this could go quite badly. <laughs> flicker and recur flicker if they try to kill it, unless they have a counter. Yeah, so if they if they try to disfigure and have counter backup, which would mean you know they have it all or whatever, <laughs> but my opponents generally do. Um, they've seen a good number of cards, I guess. So I I think the safest play is to just. Like, hmm. yeah, and, and like let five through because I just don't think we have enough insurance to like, I don't think we have enough insurance to put this in front of this and then hope the ghostly flicker resolves. So they're going to do it anyway. So we will try to ghostly flicker this and this. 
And we've got the Counterspell back up. They have three cards in hand. All right, so we're going to get back our Ghostly Flicker. I guess the way that went, we probably should have blocked the Grimag Angler, but I was worried about our opponent having something else. So we'll get back a life. We'll get back our Ghostly Flicker. And our opponent will five us. So that kind of sucks. We're going to try to Doomblade this on our end step, on their end step. But now we know. <laughs> Life stat is gained. Now we, now we know that they don't have a way to fight this, I guess. So we can start blocking the Angler with it. We'll kill this Augur. So that Chainer's Edict is a little bit closer to doing something. Oh, now they're going to kill this? Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. Cool. We do have Reaping the Graves. And we find another counter spell. Well, that's not doing much. Basically, I was playing into a way that we could play where... Actually, they could have killed it anyway. I guess where we had counter magic up. I was playing in a way that would allow us to kill this with a Chainer's Edict eventually. Maybe that was not correct, where we could just chump it ad nauseum with this many counter spells. What's up, Kirk? Yeah, I probably should have blocked Angler. Wasn't sure how much to play around with four cards in their hand. What's up, he who is in the water? How you doing tonight? Voked Mall Drifter, huh? Sure. I feel like these counter spells are going to matter a lot more in a second. Oh no! Oh my gosh, that's so sad. That is so sad. Backwaters. I do hit their land drop. Favorite popper deck I've ever played or seen. I was a pretty huge fan of that Jeskai control deck that I played um, not too long ago, but oh my god, these cards don't do anything. Um, yeah, I think we're dead now. So obviously what happened or what went wrong there was that I played around my opponent having, like if I would have put it in front of Gurmog Angler and they would have had two Disfigures, then it would have died anyway because I would have tried to Ghostly Flicker it in response to Disfigure. And then they would have disfigured again. No, and then I could have countered the disfigure. It would have ghostly flickered. So I think I played around a little bit too much. I played around um, removal spell, removal spell. Yeah, it would have gone pretty bad. So, <laughs> so we are going to lose this game. I think we could like ghostly flicker a couple of lands here, but I just don't think we have enough time to win. So against the control decks, going to bring in duress, stormbound geist, and maybe a couple of dispels over less efficient stuff but yeah three doom blades come out those are obviously not good at all so we're bringing a few duresses we will take out probably a mull drifter for a storm but no mull drifters are good in this matchup maybe disfigures they don't kill anything so we'll take out some disfigures for stormbound geist and a dispel i think that's how we're gonna run it oh echoing indicate does seem really bad so we bring in another dispel for that to fight the counter wars I think Justice is okay. Where the game's going to go so late, we might trade off life points in a really weird way. And this might actually end up winning us the game somehow. But, oh yeah, you guys are right. Spellbomb, much better than having Cars Justice here. Yeah. Thanks, Joel. Yeah, I'm trying to like talk myself out of how I played that. So I didn't block Angler. Because it would have forced us to Ghostly Flicker first. Then they could have disfigured, then we could have countered disfigure, and then they would have disfigured the arcane man. So it was gonna die anyway. Pretty much no way to defend it. I doomblade, I doombladed the auger, and I probably shouldn't have. But I don't. I, I'm. I still stand by it because we had to get rid of the angler at some point. So I had to play in such a way that would let us kill an angler with a chainer's edict. But yeah, that might have been a little too, a little too hasty. So I think I'm gonna take out one of the, maybe like one of the duresses. Duress might be dead some of the time against this deck. Because they have drifters and augers and anglers. Oh my! So we will play first. Um, I don't think does this deck run crypt incursion. I think I'm gonna keep this. It's a little slow, but we've got our stormbound guys, which is pretty good in this matchup. So I will keep this. Simply because they're on chainer's edict. I'm pretty sure we don't have a crypt incursion, right? Can we look? Yeah, no. 
Com that's complete disregard, <laughs> which is also a spicy little bit of text. So we're going to run out Dismal Backwater first over Lonely Sandbar. Those blue black mirrors, man. Grindy. <laughs> yeah. Turn one to rest. There it is. I take one of our preordains, but that's kind of a fine trade considering they're not cantripping this turn. <laughs> How you been, he was in the water? Congratulations on your uh, on your good finish there in the challenge. I believe I saw your name up in the lights. Uh, so yeah, so we're gonna preordain here, and we're gonna dismal backwater, or we're gonna aqueduct back our backwater, so that hopefully we can resolve. We're gonna top this and bottom this. Hopefully we can resolve a mull drifter sometime in the future. While our opponent's spending time fighting over this Geist. Pick up Backwater, pass the turn. Hopefully they don't have another... <laughs> Joel, dude. <laughs> You're gonna help me. You're gonna help me understand the kids with their emojis one of these days. You and Gold Version are gonna, are gonna get me with the times, huh? 16th. Your 2-1 Stoke Takashi. Yeah, man, congrats. Wicked. So I think our opponent's leaving up Disfigure for our Stormbound Geist here so that they can kill it with like an Edict on their next turn, but that's not really a big deal. Like if they're going to spend their whole next two turns killing a Stormbound Geist, then so be it. All the better to drift away with. But I think that's precisely what's going to happen. <laughs> Mono Black Tron. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that sounds pretty wild. Ooh, also a Stormbound Geist. All right, well, that's not that bad because we can just play out our Spell Bomb pretty fearlessly here. So we'll play this out. I really wish I could like kill this and then Spell Bomb and like trick him. Unfortunately, we cannot. So go to combat and if they do block, we'll, uh, we'll Spell Bomb them. I don't think they will. I think maybe they'll try to clock us. Their clock is better than ours. So there goes Stormbound Geist. This does have to shut down their strategy in an interesting way. So we'll Spell Bomb you. We're going to draw a couple cards here. Our opponent doesn't have a way to get up to five mana to try to Mull Drifter, so that's all right. Draw Ghostly Flicker, not too bad. Going to cycle a Lonely Sandbar in damage, which is a little weird. Not really. Like, there's there are some cards that you can get value out of, like, that feel that way, but I don't think so. I'm trying to think. Like, there's, like, some abilities. Like, there's the Unearth ability, and there's, like, you know, Tortured Existence and things like that. Like, there's ways to do stuff <laughs> that gets around counters. That's what you love about white-black now. So many different directions you can take and build. Yeah, seriously. Like, it's the wh white-black is, like, the value town combo in the format do a pretty neat trick here we can like play out bog and if they play another stormbound guys to block this and we can just like flicker bog when it blocks bog pretty good draw here yep opponent just gonna pass which is awesome we can leave up some of our interaction to defend our Stormbound Geist. We're not going to run out Bog yet, because I just don't think it's worth it. Bog not. <laughs> yes, Joel. <laughs> I think so. And I think just how we're playing like so much faster than them, they might not have an opportunity. Like If we win this game, I don't know that they'll be able to take the next one fast enough. Mm -hmm. I would love for Commander to do that. Yeah, no, you can't do anything about that. So Augur's going to get them a look for something that can kill our stuff. Yep. Stoked to have this Dispel in hand right now. <laughs> like the Planeswalkers. <laughs> Come on, common Planeswalker when. <laughs> See if Augur gets a look at anything. Forbidden Alchemy, sure. I'm not above Dispelling a Forbidden Alchemy, but our opponent already hit 5 mana. So I think this should be reserved for doing something a little bit more productive than that. I guess it would make sense, like, with having Bog on board. We'll see what our draw step gives us. Spell Bomb. Interesting. So we're going to attack with Stormbound Geist. No reason to not do so. 
we're going to edict them right away because we want to kill um we want to kill anglers with this eventually and then we will bog um leave up ghostly flicker if they tap out for forbidden alchemy we'll uh we'll flicker probably geist and Pajuka bog instant speed i guess i could just play out spell bomb and like hold on to it because one two three four five it, it'll less it'll let us yeah it'll let us like fog out their alchemy we have no way to counter their one two three four five yeah so this is going to help us keep them off of germangler for just a little bit longer and if we flicker this they have to fight through it yeah and if we have to fight through Or sorry, if they have to fight through removal with this, we'll be in okay shape. So here comes Alchemy. Yeah, so we'll let Alchemy go, but then before we pass priority, we're going to flicker Geist Bog. Yeah, so I'm going to do that now. I think getting any value, getting rid of any value that they can get off of Bog, because they won't be able to cast an Angler next turn now either. So I kind of think this is relevant. And we get our Stormbound Geist reset so that we can... Eat a couple more removal spells with it. A little bit fancy. It does mean we might have to power an Archaeomancer through later on, but <laughs> Joel's okay with that. Joel Joel understands the play. Cool. <laughs> God playing. Yes. <laughs> it me. The thing about their deck, though, like they they do have <laughs> one eight hundred type plays <laughs> somewhere somewhere in the distance. That's pretty bad. So they're gonna get to take our dispel. And leave up double blue to counter the small drifter next turn, which was kind of the plan. Um, but our clock's better than theirs. So if they're gonna spend a bunch of time doing that, we might be okay. Sure. Leaving up double blue here. They take spell bomb. Well, spell bomb doesn't matter as much. One, two, three, four, five. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so we're gonna get to resolve a mole drifter with dispel backup next turn, which has gotta be good. Like, I guess they can kill it. Um, <laughs> so let's play a land. Um, let's try to get any shenanigans out of the way. Maybe we won't have to use this dispel. Thinking maybe they might want to use a removal spell on this. Doesn't look like they do. Let's see what kind of fight we can get in over this mole drifter. Cast mole drifter. No reason to flashback any chain edicts here or anything. <laughs> Molly D's <laughs> Ha! Got him. So we are tapped out now. Or we're hellbent. No, it, it looks like... Oh, man. <laughs> Epic runbacks. <laughs> Let's go one more time. <laughs> Our opponent's missing land drops too. So here comes Gurmog Angler, but our clock is fast enough that it doesn't matter that much. Hello, Joel. All the dispels. So here goes their graveyard, and here comes the Angler. So we're looking for an Edict, but just resolving more Drifters is fine. Counterspell. I wish I would have had that a second ago. Still happy to see it here. No blocks from our opponent, so let's just cast another Drifter. They're at 11. Like, the this 5 isn't super relevant, especially where we have Counterspell the Spell backup. <laughs> that was the best draw 2 I've ever had. <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> All the drifty boys. <laughs> and drift away. Can somebody call Uncle Cracker and let him know that I'm drifting deeply? Our opponent, in the interest of time... And in the face of infinite mole drifters, has decided to scoop it up. Duress was so good for them this game. Like, we're on the draw. So maybe I might take out... Nah. Nah. I, I like this configuration. <laughs> mole drifter tribal. <laughs> I feel like all of the games tonight, it's going to be a long old stream, guys. Are you guys ready? Settle in. Get some food. Get some gourmet oatmeal. 
as is as has become the culinary um the culinary mascot of our stream gourmet oatmeal <laughs> so so as long as you get the gourmet anglers covered you should be all set i think so it's hard though like we're really not great at answering them counterspell channer's edict does it taking care of their graveyard with clutch with clutch bazooka box <laughs> so yeah so i guess we'll hope to run that back nothing here really helps us complete disregard looking pretty bad i guess complete disregard can pair with um that's kind of fancy this can pair with this figure to get rid of it maybe this is for soul manipulation decks i actually don't know uh this hand's not great but it has a reaping the graves which is exactly the kind of card i want in this matchup we're on the draw so we might end up having to discard a hand size which obviously isn't ideal but i can just discard this on earth so yeah no rats that is really weird um I don't think this hand isn't bad enough to mulligan I mean it's not great we don't want this right now this isn't that powerful this probably isn't doing anything these could be boats it's not bad it's not bad if we're gonna play the slow game this is an okay hand opponent plays a swamp no duress targets which is nice we'll play dismal backwater not unhappy to find untap land there but if we want to get up to three mana on time then we have to use this to mirror aqueduct you think I wasn't supposed to keep I think it's a pretty decent hand so we're gonna take our time staring at each other a little bit here uh aqueduct is very awkward um, but we are gonna play aqueduct and we'll discard Seagate Oracle to hand size because we can just unearth it eventually of course unless our opponent has a way to interact with this disrupt what do you mean <laughs> oh opponent playing really fast um so i am going to play with seagate oracle here it is a good card yeah it is a cool card i agree but they have exclude excludes a really good card too yikes oh just alchemy okay sure so we're going for the early germ daddy by the looks which isn't we're pretty bad against that I guess we can block for a while with oracles one two three four five six seven magic numbers Ooh man <laughs> if only i'm still gonna take stormbound geist here that's right yep and it only hits non-creature spells i believe the reason i took stormbound geist over bog is because they're gonna cast the oh dang it now i feel like an idiot i thought they were gonna cast an angler there so it wouldn't have mattered um at this rate it would only put them off angler for a couple of turns but it still feels kind of bad yeah i maybe i maybe i got next level back there a little bit so we're going to attempt a stormbound geist play a swamp and we're going to unearth this seagate oracle we're going to turn the clock up hopefully our opponent doesn't have a disrupt i guess yeah, M. Lobo uses M. Lovebo uses disrupt. It's true. There is a chittering rats. Well, let's take a chittering rats and see what that can do, huh? <laughs> it's got a booty on it. I think this is gonna eat a doom blade here. Hard to say. Sure. So it comes back. But they're gonna have to spend some amount of their next turn dealing with this which is kind of nice because if they do we might actually be able to sneak this through with this in a couple turns no that doesn't make any sense <laughs> just trying to play fast bog sure are they gonna do a fancy flicker bog i wonder mm -hmm. happy to see it there instead of later because we have this in hand yeah, I think M. Lovebo was the first person I saw playing it as well. I feel like Chittering Rats is pretty good against these guys. So let's see what happens. We got a clock on now. Granted, we're still pretty bad against Grimog Angler. <laughs> 
We're not exactly great at fighting anglers. Yeah, it is. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they can angler and yeah, I think that's exactly what they're realizing right now. Which I'm okay with. Sure. Gonna shrink Geist down to a one. A one one. Wow, is Stormbound Geist gonna like eat three removal spells? <laughs> that's nuts. Cool. So we'll edict you. Mm, I mean, yeah, it isn't. Yeah, I think that is the play. So we'll edict you. Mm, maybe not. We have to play a tap land here. I think we should Chittering Rats. I feel like the top of their deck. Fear the Geisty Boy. I feel like the top of their deck isn't in great shape right now. So I think Chittering Rats would actually be awesome. Blue Red Pieces. It's possible. I mean, yeah, it, like, I'll play any deck that has a good finish and that I haven't kind of showcased yet. Like, I think that's that's pretty much my criteria for for net benefits decks. And uh, if we're possibly popper playable, I'm basically just looking at decks that new cards can kind of improve or just, like, bruise around new cards. But I'm thinking about just moving on to, um, like, infinite combos or something. Or, like, adding some stuff. Adding adding some more content to the uh, to the possibly popper playable kind of brand. So we'll see how that goes. I'm going to Demir Aqueduct here so that I can get up to enough mana to protect a Muldrifter with a Dispel next turn. And I'm not going to worry about this Augur. Um, we have Edicts in hand now, so I think we will attack. We'll see what our opponent's going to do. Of course they're going to block. Yeah, right? So there's not many of them, but there is... Have you guys ever seen that? Have you guys ever seen that uh, there's like a post on MTG Salvation or something like that, where they've just cataloged all of the infinite combos. Oh yeah, yeah, like coming back and playing like something like Scred Delver after this long, that's a pretty good way to undo um, <laughs> undo a Chittering Rats trigger. Opponent back down to four cards in hand and it looks like we are going to resolve our own Muldrifter this turn. Ooh, that's pretty good too. We can still, we can force another Drifter through next turn. I kind of don't want to give them the opportunity. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just going to resolve a Mull Drifter here, and then we'll wait until we can do a little bit more flashy stuff. We'll leave up to Spell for when that matters. We will go to combat and attack, attack. And I'll attack here. I'll trade a Mull Drifter with a Chittering Rats. Why not? We've got Reaping the Graves and Dispel. Yep, gonna take two down to seventeen, and we'll pass. Oh, it's definitely complicated. I uh, I've been playing complicated decks for the last few weeks. It's been nuts. It's been pretty tough, man. <laughs> Opponent with four cards in hand, lots of unknowns. I guess we got a pretty full grip ourselves. Maybe if it, it has to place well, or or get a new card in there to really highlight it, or yeah, maybe I'll say maybe. It's a cool deck. There's Angler. Which I'm not super concerned about right now. Another Augur, that's not good. Their board's getting pretty crazy. Uh, I'm not really sure. Probably not. <laughs> wow, whiff on Augur, two cards in hand. So our Edicts are looking pretty bad, but our... Assault Squad's not looking that bad. I feel like we can just get more aggressive than they can. I'm not going to kill this Mole Drifter because I feel like they have a Soul Manipulation in hand they're looking to use next turn. So not killing the Drifty Boy. But we do have to start edicting stuff away. Um, so I'll play a land. Play... That was the wrong land, probably. Play Stormbound Geist. We do have to spell Backup. Yep, Stormbound Geist respond or resolves. And let's edict them. Just to start getting that working. It's getting a little sticky. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> so we got enough power on board to potentially get in the way of this Grimog Angler. And that might be what I do. I just I might just play the long game here and leave back enough chump blockers for Grim Angler. 
Are we back enough blockers for Gurmangler? We'll leave up to Spell as well. Might be sequencing my mana a little bit awkwardly here, but I'm basically just playing as fast as possible. So we'll see what our opponent's got. Diabolic Edict. Mm. Yeah, that's that's fine. This will come back as a 3-3. Three, three. And I don't know what else our opponent wants to try to resolve, but I'm okay with having a bigger attacker. Undying Evil, there it is, man. Undying Evil indeed. Let's see what our opponent's got here. Stormbound Geist, okay. The plot is thickening. Thickening indeed. Wouldn't mind finding that Bazooka Bog or a Nihil Spell Bomb. One card in our opponent's hand. So there isn't really any reason to flashback our Chainer's Edict now. Like, it's pretty, it's pretty awkward, but we basically just have to stonewall them until we can lock them out somehow. And then just build up this huge board. Here comes Angler. Okay. Well, I will block with everything. Especially where we have access to... Reaping the Graves. So we'll block like this. See what they want to do. We have a Dispel to defend our blockers as well. Thick thighs. can You can't even see them. They're so big. They had to leave them out of shot. Let's see what our opponent's got here. This is when Forbidden Alchemy starts getting really good. And we'll dispel this. All right, so they're going to lose their Angler. Our board looks a lot better than theirs at this point. Whoa, Joel. You're getting spicy, man. <laughs> Only going to chew through one Seagate Oracle there. That's pretty good. All right, sweet. Our turn. There's a Mall Drifter. One, two, three, four. I'll leave up a couple blue mana, I think, though. One, two. Oh, we can't leave up two blue mana. Yeah, that's really awkward. Um, so we'll play Dismal Backwater. Opponent is not happy with us. <laughs> nice moto. <laughs> They're not happy about us playing the mirror match. Um, I'm going to leave up Counterspell here until next turn, because if they play something impactful, I'd really like to do something about it, and f getting just getting that flashback Forbidden Alchemy could be worth it. Imagine getting Piracy Charm looped. That would be pretty crappy. I am going to counter this. Um, Augur of Bolas is a really good card. <laughs> I know it's probably not as good as, say, a Gurmog Angler or another Stormbound Geist, but we do have ways to eventually deal with that. Here comes Stormbound Geist. Okay. So we will block. It'll come back, and I think it might be time to Reaping the Graves. Get back, just get back Geist and Oracle. So maybe I should have blocked with Mole Drifter. No, there's no time to Reap yet. No reason to Reap yet. So play out, probably shouldn't have played that out, but whatever. Playing fast, winning games. So we will run out a Drifter. Draw some cards. And we'll see if our opponent wants to block with their Stormbound guys here because we have enough blockers. I'm just doing this to see if we can find an answer to this, although I don't even know that we have one in our deck. Another Counterspell is good enough, so I'm going to attack with Stormbound guys here and see if they want to trade. I doubt they will. Board looking pretty good here, gang. So they are going to block. Double block. Okay. Don't really know what's going on here. They are going to trade. They're not going to trade. <laughs> yeah, and I can get them back, right? Like, it's not a big deal. And like I said, I am just going to leave up counter magic. I think our opponent's kind of like clocks coming a little bit here, but whatever. So we'll do this. A whole lot of gang stuff. <laughs> and uh, yeah, board's looking pretty good. Got a Chainer's Edict in the bin. You know, hitting our land drops all day, all night. 
Counterspell in hand, opponent's at two minutes, and I think we're just about to, uh, should be able to get around this. Start the winning. Opponent draws a land. Our turn. Okay. Preordain, pretty awesome draw. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So let's edict them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Mm, I kind of changed my mind. Just because, like, I think we can win like this, right? Yeah. So we'll do that. And Chittering Rats doesn't do anything here. Edict's actually pretty good. So we'll top Edict. We will cast Edict. This is going to allow us to leave um, leave up Counterspell on their turn. And I believe this is our second spell. So if we cast Reaping the Graves, we can get back Geist, Oracle, Geist. So let's go to Combat and Attack. Ghostly Flicker. <laughs> Ghostly Licker. And they are going to trade Drifters, which is awesome, because we're just going to get a Drifter back instead of a Seagate Oracle. So we are going to reap those graves, storm off, get Mull Drifter first, copy, and we don't want to go same copies. <laughs> yes, great. Our opponent's going to flashback Forbidden Alchemy. And we'll go ahead and counter that, especially where we have two Edicts in the bin. I'm not really afraid of anything they have now. So Reaping Graves will resolve. Get a Geist. Get a Geist. Get back our stuff. And we should just be wrapping it up right about now. Cool. All right, we won the die roll. We'd love to play first. Uh, yeah, no, got a mulligan this. So this is like the unfortunate thing with 22 land decks. I find that, like, I've played, this is good, I've, I've played a fair number of 22 land decks that run Preordain, and you almost, I'm going to keep this on top. This card's really good in a lot of matchups. So we'll Dismal Backwater, pass the turn. Um, Any new, so yeah, so HZ Dota, it comes from, I lived in Newfoundland, and I live in New Brunswick. So um, any new province actually comes from that. I lived in the provinces with new in their names. <laughs> so I'm going to leave up Echoing Decay for Ninja the Deep Hours here. And if they don't Ninja, then we'll try to force their hand at the end of their turn. Jeskai Koldotha. Deck never strong. Um, yeah, I guess I could have killed it there. But they might play like a Delver or something. I think it's worth taking one damage to uh, kill a Delver. A potential Delver. There's Augur. Unfortunately, we can't counter it or anything so our opponent's going to get to enjoy the first delver of the match for a hard counter gonna be one of those nights huh so we are going to echoing decay um I, no th i think it, it's just gonna get it's just gonna get a lot better i guess where they have hard counter and more blue mana than scrub delver will ever need this might be a good opportunity to do something about this fairy but let's uh no and you know what i am gonna get rid of it it's just one like if we can't we can't get in front of that thing. It'll eventually be a way for them to get a ninja. And of course, we don't want that happening. So we're going to preordain before we make our land drop. We're going to bottom lands. We don't have our fifth land for our mall drifters yet, but we uh, we don't really... We'll have a lot of time to find that land. Doomblade is welcome here. If they end up picking up this auger ball, of course, that's a beating. But hopefully that means they won't leave up enough mana to protect the ninja. Yep, I'm going to play Evolving Wilds. Sack Evolving Wilds. Probably getting a draw off of this some auger ninja stuff oh just another auger okay not great that means they bottomed some gas with this one. Ooh, they find preordain that's pretty good yep gonna get in for one so no ninja yet and uh because i know they have hard counter in hand i'm going to play chittering rats out here because it might give them the opportunity to uh to ninja with counter backup and we have ghostly flicker hopefully we can start doing some shenanigans but this deck is is nuts <laughs> delver's pretty good so let's see if they've got the uh they don't have the days all right opponent pretty much telegraphing that this is not a days <laughs> this is not going to be a days kind of night so let's see if they tap out of counter magic in favor of a bit of removal 
They are going to use some removal on our chittering rats, unfortunately. And looks like they're going to tap out of everything but spell stutter sprite. So this doom blade is going to be able to eat an auger, although I don't know that it should. Yeah, I don't even know if I want to get in a fight here. This might be ninja. If it's a ninja, I'm getting in a fight. But no ninja, they're going to hold up hard counter. I guess next turn is Muldrifter turn, but we don't have the lands to support that. So preordain. And I think I'm going to leave up hard counter Doomblade here. Um, we're, we're like a little choked. It's awkward because I bottomed all of that mana last turn. I'm going to put Chittering Rats on top and Chainer's Eater to the, on top as well. That doesn't seem right. So I'm going to bottom this. We'll get the Chittering Rats. We're going to try to force their hand here so that it makes their next turn a little bit awkward. So if they have to counter here um, and they commit a ninja to the board, then we should have a way to deal with it. Very surprise. Suddenly a daze. But they're in pretty good shape here. They've resolved a lot of two-for-ones. Preordain already in hand to continue the digging. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe I should have kept the Chainer's Edict, but I don't really, like, it doesn't really do enough. Especially where they're representing so much hard counter magic. We only have four lands right now. And I kind of wanted to get rid of their counter magic, just in case they did commit a ninja there. So, I stand by it. And it won't let you undo, like it won't let me undo my top decks. So once I was like, I want to keep this rat, and I topped it. Oh, there's a drifty boy. Uh, I'm going to try to evoke this. Mm, maybe I shouldn't. No, I'm going to leave up Doomblade, Counterspell. Tribal Bolas. Yep, that's what we're facing. Tribal Bolas. So let's try to give them a bit of a difficult turn here. Are they Myco Island? Fairy Miscreant? Yeah, okay, here they come. So is a ninja coming down? that's really that's the card we care about no ninja okay ponder sure see how they shuffle if they shuffle this could be them setting up a delver this card is just really good especially against us we are trying to one for one a lot of the time um and they can set up the top of their deck really well they shuffled okay Sounds good. So we'll start pecking away at these. Mm, no, actually, I like I don't think that's correct. I think Ninja just wins in the game. And we are we are going to have to evoke a Mold Drifter. So I guess it's like the worst of both worlds here. But we're missing our land drops, which is terrible. You bottom two lands, you just get entirely punished for it. And our opponent has the other hard counter. That's probably going to be it. I think they're going to find a chance to... Either get a Ninja or like flip a Delver. I guess they did... Wow. That's aggressive. That's very aggressive. So I think they are going to try to flip a Delver here. I just feel like not Doomblading there was correct. I think they're going to commit something that's more Doombladeable shortly. Our opponent ninjaing so fast. Ninjaing too fast. Too fast to ninja. Yep. I had to take that risk. I had to try to hit a land drop there aggressive playing yeah they are playing quite aggressive but i mean we're at seven so i'd be like okay with them playing this auger here but i don't know if <laughs> i don't think we're okay either way just like this card is nuts like it got ponder or it got preordain and counter spell so this effectively tutored <laughs> like two of the better spells in their deck Oh yeah, and they countered an evoked drifter. But I mean, like, that could be their way to win it. Like, we're we're in a really bad position here. Like, there's there's not a lot of coming back from this. We get to hold up one counter spell. We haven't been making our land drops. I couldn't take a risk of evoking a mall drifter there, so we just kind of kind of have to live with not making my land drop again. When I said I had a bunch of time to hit my land drop, I didn't mean this much time. And here they come. This is one of those decks that could like like brainstorm is one of those cards. That can end the rat lock sometimes. Ugh, more ninjas, huh? Nah, that's probably going to be it. I guess our life total is pretty dang low. <laughs> we can counter the auger on the way back down, but as it stands, that's probably just game. But I will. 
I will counter the auger on the way back down. Sure, doesn't really matter. This is a flex. This this that's a flex ponder right there. I guess it allows you to set up your auger a little bit better. They choose to shuffle. Okay. Um. Yeah. Whatever. This is gonna force for, through removal for this stuff. So. And they yeah they played a mountain this turn. Bottoms two with preordain, gushes. Opponent just gushing for us right now. <laughs> Man, like just play your augers. Like, <laughs> imagine days. Ugh. Opponent nine cards in hand. <laughs> Eight cards in hand. There is a delver, which is still pretty much you know. I guess they bottom both off the ponder. This might not get flipped, but another Mull Drifter, not going to do it. So we're going to concede here. I guess I already know we're on a Drifter deck and stuff, but there's no reason to uh, to keep going. We're just dead. Big time dead. All right, Delver decks. I think Shrivel's like okay against Mono Blue Delver, but actually probably not great. I guess Complete Disregard. It's an instant speed removal spell that can hit their ninjas. And Chainer's Edict's pretty bad against this deck. Evan Cars Justice is fine. The rest is probably a trap. Stormbound guys still come in, but I think that's pretty much it. I think we're kind of going light touch here. No, I don't think... what Duress only hits hard counter. Hard counter is the only spell that they have that we care about. So I just don't think that's... I don't think that's correct. A Drifter might be a little bit slow, but I don't think we want to take them out. Unearth, probably going to get spell stuttered. I think, yeah, I think Shrivel's okay, but I actually think we have better, like, if I'm bringing in Geists and, like, we have Echoing Decay, we have a bunch of Disfigures and stuff, like, I don't think we need, I don't think we need more of those cards, especially where Ninja and um, Augur don't die to these. Um, Dispel also only hits um, Hard Counter. So, hey, what's up, Guy Geyerson? How you doing? Welcome to the Janku Banku. Just thinking about the last cut here, which is kind of tough. I don't like Chainer's Edict's not bad enough to get rid of all of them. Doomblade might be in contention. Maybe Reaping the Graves. Like, I feel like it's a little greedy. But I don't, like, we can, I think we're playing the very long game against this deck. Like, we're playing the Reaping the Graves game against this deck. We actually have to try to lock them out of the game. <laughs> Hydroblast, Dispel, Shriveled Dirt. Well, so what do we take out? So you want to bring in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 cards. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think Duress is worth it. Like, Lightning Bolt kills us. If we can stop them from killing us before we have to... These just... They don't hit enough stuff. Scred just doesn't matter. Um, So I think I'm going to... This is tough, trying to figure out what I am going to cut. I might actually have to cut a Mull Drifter, because tapping out into a Drifter doesn't seem super great. I might cut a Seagate Oracle? Maybe even a Chittering Rats. Chittering Rats doesn't really do much. I guess it blocks Ninja. Uh, we're cutting it close. I think I am going to drop a Seagate Oracle. And that's about as many cuts as I can make, gang. If you guys want to talk about what you will cut, what you would cut for the other cards, then... Feel free, but I'm, I'm sticking to it. Those are my guns, and I'm sticking to them. So I'm going to keep this. We have turn one disfigure for their fairy. We'll eventually get up to preordain land. This counter spell looks kind of like a mulligan, but I'm okay with this hand. This might be a Delver beater. Our opponent, turn one evolving wilds. Sure. comes back to us. A little awkward not getting a target for our disfigure there. So Aqueduct back the swamp. So they might they'll have an opportunity here to actually commit something without us having the option of doing something about it. Granted, I almost conceded the game right there. Oh, that card's so good. <laughs> we don't have the answers for it. They find a brainstorm our turn reaping the graves hmm i 
I kind of want to play Shittering Rats here. I feel like <laughs> we should have three memory laps in the sideboard. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. Hogger of Bolas is just such a good card. So I'm going to run out Chittering Rats here just so that maybe they're a little choked on mana and they're going to have to like brainstorm or like use some of their resources to uh, to try to get around Chittering Rats. If they play like a land, kill this, we're probably in bad shape. But yep, yeah, Brainstorm's going to help get them out of the... <laughs> memory Lapse confirmed better than Chittering Rats. Got it. You heard it here, folks. Opponent is going to get to enjoy a Brainstorm fetch following an Augur of Bolas. That seems pretty good. This deck's busted, fam. Now we have to leave up our instant speed interaction for their ninja. So we're going to pass. They're going to kill this. We're going to let it go. And then if they... Mm. Do you know what can prevent all of that, though? Is by attacking like this. They'll go to blocks. And we'll just Doomblade this. That's definitely a way to prevent a ninja next turn. <laughs> Thanks, Guy Guyerson. Thank you, man. I will. I will. I've been enjoying it a lot. I shouldn't have let them block. <laughs> I was trying to talk myself out of it. <laughs> so if we lose by two, my bad. Opponent's going to cast a Delver, sure. Lots of magic, or lots of mana up to counter things. But I, th I don't think we have an option. I think we have to disfigure this here. So if they run out of spell starter sprite, at least it'll make our next turn a little bit better. Just straight up counter spell. Well, happier to see that eat a counter than anything else. Find a ghostly flicker. That's not super impressive or anything here. So we're going to preordain. Pretty risky. Going down an awful lot of mana. They're going to bolt chittering rats. Oh, they're just going to counter the preordain. Okay. Yep. And I think we just have to pass here, because if they want to attack with this Delver, yeah, that's pretty awkward. Okay, so um, they're only at three, though. Maybe I should pressure them. <laughs> Thanks, Joel. Um, yeah, no, I don't think, I don't think we, I don't think us being the beatdown is the way that we're going to, we're going to win this game. So I get, you know, if they flip and then they ninja back the Delver, like we're in pretty bad shape, but no flip. Up to four cards in our opponent's hand. All right, what's going on here? What kind of nonsense are we about to get delved into? Opponent just cantripping like crazy. So they decided to go two bottomed. I think they're looking for a removal spell for this. Pretty obviously that or they're just looking for a ninja. Burb, see you when you get back, Joel. Um, I don't think we're in a good position. I think them countering that preordain. Oh man, if only we had Echoing Decay in hand right now. Let's preordain into Echoing Decay. They could just have another Pyroblast. They take Echoing Decay out. No. Okay. Hmm. They put two cards on top. So I think they're trying to flip this Delver. Both of these Delvers. So I'm going to Chittering Rats here. I don't fully expect <laughs> that this is the best play. But if they stack their deck in such a way that this is going to prevent them from Delvering for a second, then I'm okay with that. And uh, maybe they have all nonsense in hand. And they can't cast a lightning bolt here. I might ruin their plans somewhat. So we'll do it like that. And like I said, we're just going to pass. We don't want to open these up to any kind of shenanigans. And we'll see. Did we do it? No. <laughs> and they flip a gush. Pretty good way to undo a chittering rats or two. Delvers, Delvers, Delvers. And they, yeah, they very well could have put it on top of the rats. That's true. I was hoping they had stacked in such a way that I might have been screwing it up. It could have gone either way. It's really going for the high risk, high reward. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. 
I don't know. I felt like going slow was the right thing because we're just like so far behind, but you're probably right. I probably don't win by just like <laughs> hanging out, doing nothing. Um, all right. Let's see if they can, let's see if we can bounce back from this somehow. Resolving an echoing decay. Might get us there. Top deck decay one time. They got it. <laughs> don't worry. They got the answer. Okay. So we'll preordain. I feel like a spell stutter is going to eat this. And they're going to pyroblast. So yeah, that's probably going to be it. All right, no reason, definitely no reason not to attack here. <laughs> Delver's going to delve, man. It's just how it do. And they're at 16. Let's see if they get this one flipped. I'd imagine. Yep. <laughs> uh, just getting nine by some Delvers. <laughs> Echoing Decay, come on. <laughs> Echoing Decay, FT Dub. Can you imagine? They're not going to shuffle with Ponder, so I feel like... <laughs> come on! Heart of the Yugi. <laughs> Going to five against a Bolt deck. Bud. <laughs> Come on. Opponent gonna bolt on our upkeep. <sighs> Ain't no way we're getting out of this one, gang. I think we're just dead. Can we evoke Drifter into anything that matters? We can't. So I think like I could just concede. I might as well evoke Mall Drifter. Just see. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like they've got counter magic in hand too. Our opponent, man, they're they're getting that rub in value. So like what what like we could like ghostly flicker <laughs> Um for the mad swag, but let's just Nah, no bolts. No bolts to bolt ourselves with. So we're gonna invoke Mole Drifter, but I think, yeah. Hey man, three flip delvers can't beat it. And we wouldn't have found our land drop for a minute either. So anyway, that's it. Delver's gonna delve. Match three. With rat lock. No no locks with the rats yet, but we're only one and one. So not to get discouraged. Alright, match three. And I'm gonna keep this. I'm gonna keep this. This is a fine opener. We can do a, a whole sorts of stuff. A whole sorts of stuff. <laughs> is that Jeff? I'm in them Jeff. <laughs> yeah. That's true. So, like, I think, go, yeah, going over it is absolutely the strategy. It's it's a crazy good card, you know? I don't know if I'm just, like, in the feedback loop or something. Ah, the dorks, huh? Well, given that our disfigure can just kill whatever matters next turn, I'm going to preordain here. I'll keep a land. And I'll also keep an edict. I think the more... Yeah. I think the more removal, the better. Play a land, pass the turn. It's a little unfortunate that we drew like that, because if we would have topped island, like if we knew we had an island there, we could have just like... <laughs> Sorry, if I drew island, I could have left up counterspell, which is a lot better here. They shouldn't be able to play a Lizalana. I've seen crazier things. Yeah, so I kind of figured whatever they played here, we could deal with with a Disfigure might free us up to do some more next turn so we'll just figure this we're just going to try to disrupt them for about a hundred years and uh and eventually win <laughs> we'll, we'll worry about winning someday it's not time to start resolving seagate oracles just yet but i think next turn we'll see what happens it's probably going to be a reason to not chainers edict anything Liz Alana Huntmaster. Well, we might as well counter while we have the luxury of having this much mana up, so we'll counter that. And we find a bog. Yeah, so now it's time to... Mm, I guess we could keep them off of four mana. So let's keep them off four mana, and we'll worry about casting a Seagate Oracle once we're done killing the dorks. <laughs> This might take us into our land drop again next turn, too, so if that's the case, Timberwatch? 
Oh, lead the stampede. Come on. I was trying to one for one you into oblivion. So Evan Carr's Justice, obviously a great draw. Wow, that was a good lead the stampede. They got a lot of creatures that mattered. So we're going to be pointing... Oh, they pitched Distant Melody to hand size. That's interesting. We're going to play Seagate Oracle, looking for more interaction here. I'm not going to have to kill anything instant speed next turn. Uh, we'll take Preordain. Preordain is going to help us find our land drop and possibly... Ugh. Okay, so we can kill we can kill Timberwatch next turn, play a Mole Drifter. Or sorry, play a Chittering Rats or a Seagate Oracle. And then the following turn, play a Mole Drifter and hopefully keep finding our land drops. I kind of want to keep this. I think I'm going to keep it. Five mana and a Mole Drifter, like, you can't really complain, right? So we're going to do it like this and pass the turn. And we just got to hope we can grind them out or eventually use all of this card draw to find our... Uh, even cars justice because that's really that's our end game right there i feel like locking these bad boys what is this just fancy elvish vanguard okay that doesn't really matter can doom blade yep pumps the vanguard so it's queer ranger gone nettle sentinel yep pumps the vanguard now this is unfortunate because we do want to kill this and also the timber watch elf so there's Mull Drifter. We're going to Oracle instead of Chittering Rats again here. Because Chittering Rats still isn't... Like, we'll wait until they're quite low on resources to do that. So we will Seagate Oracle. If we can counter the Timberwatch Elf, even better. Oh, there's a Counterspell. So we're going to put Counterspell in hand. Pass the turn. Worth noting that they don't have a ton of mana here. So we'll counter Timber Watch here, and then we should be able to Doom Blade, the Vanguard in a turn. It's going to be tough to navigate. Oh, it's another Vanguard. Fabulous. <laughs> well, hopefully this bad boy doesn't get too big. Can try to prevent that from happening. And now they're going to do the Quarian Ranger thing. I will be blocking the Seed Oracles. Or maybe I shouldn't. Like, I don't know. Because I might be able to deal with this by just, like, playing a Chittering Rats. No, they're going to they're gonna be able to play enough elves if this gets out of hand. Opponent just doing the pump fake dance. Do we see the Nettle Sentinel? Yeah, okay. So Nettle Sentinel is on board. Sure. Replays on land. There's Elvish Mystic. Yep. Maybe they're just going to play a bunch of stuff so that... <laughs> we, like... Well, they can't, they can't effectively play. Yeah, so none of this stuff matters. So we're going to kill this Vanguard here. And uh, leave up Counter Magic next turn. Here comes the bad boy. Let's go to blocks. No blocks. Doom Blade, your boy. Turn comes back. All right, there's a preordain. Maybe I'll find something better than, like, if I can find a doom blade for this, might just be better than casting a chittering rats. No, I think chittering rats is actually pretty good here. Um, so we've got priest of Titania. They've got essentially infinite mana. Yeah, let's chittering rats here. It provides enough blockers for this vanguard through an extra elf too. So we'll just do it like that and pass. It's going to be a grind, gang. Opponent knows what they're drawing. There's Timberwatch. So we will counter Timberwatch. Hopefully they don't just like have another Timberwatch for the epic rubbins. And have you a one drop. Just come on. <laughs> Not cool, man. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm glad we can still block this, but... Oh, okay. Yes. Commit. Commit to the attack. Come on. Dang it. Yes. 
Tell me more, tell me more. Okay, so we're gonna block like this. Hopefully our opponent doesn't reassign blockers correctly. We're gonna kill this. Doesn't have first strike or anything like that. Dang it. <laughs> we're gonna need to keep a Seagate Oracle. We gotta find an answer for this pretty much right away. So we're gonna preordain, maybe even evoke a Mole Drifter. And yeah, there goes a couple threats. Nice. Okay, so <laughs> okay, we're all right. We're okay. We're gonna be all right. So we're going to Doomblade this right away before things get out of hand. Probably should have tapped two blue mana there, actually, or two black mana. But it is what it is. We will preordain. Hopefully, find a little bit more interaction. I'm gonna top Dismal Backwater, top Chainer's Edict, and we'll edict them. <laughs> tell me more, tell me more. And uh, and hopefully use Muldrifter, Dismal Backwater to find enough action that our opponent can't recover. But they could just find, like, lead the Stampede and draw five. Ah, shucks. <laughs> okay, Distant Melody, it's just a divination. It's like a worst... No, no, it's actually quite good. They're going to draw three. <laughs> All right, okay, no, no action spells just yet. Pretty much our opponent's best draw. We just spend, you know, numerous turns manipulating and trying to F up their board. But that Distant Melody didn't do very much. I guess I've seen better. Even Car's Justice, very much online. So we might draw into like a Disfigure or a Cantrip with this Mull Drifter and an Untap Land. So I'm going to go ahead and run it out. Draw a couple cards. Aqueduct. I don't know why Aqueduct would matter. I guess it helps us get one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so it'll help us hit seven untapped mana sources next turn. Just gonna allow us to start flashing back our edicts. We really gotta lock him out here shortly, though. They found another land. Pretty unlucky for the Elves player. We might just want to start digging into the lock, though. Hmm. I think that's what we'll do. So one, two, three, four, five. Cast a Mall Drifter. We could find Evancar's Justice too. We find a counter spell, more rats. That's perfect. So we'll pass with counter magic up to defend against Distant Melody or lead the Stampede. Nettle Sentinel doesn't matter. These rats looking a little awkward. Come on, combo. Combo off the top. I think it's time to start attacking with the Mall Drifters too. Just more lands. Okay, so we'll play a land. We'll Edict you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The less elves, the better. We'll go to combat, and I'm going to attack with both drifters. Maybe not leaving up counter magic there was a bad idea. Because we do have time, but we might be able to end this game. Got lots of counter magic. Come on! <laughs> Never lucky. Okay, opponent is going to lead the Stampede, because of course they will. The one time you don't leave up your counter magic, huh? <laughs> See what they find. Another Timber Watch. So that's really all that matters here. Gotta find an answer to that. Toot sweet. Mm-hmm. Wow, man, our opponent has resolved so many, like, card draw spells for an Elves deck. They are getting somewhat lucky. Here comes the rest of the Elves. Mm-hmm. Dang. I guess the moral of the story is don't tap out of your uh, counter magic, gang. Especially when your opponent's got those hot top decks coming. So yeah, it's pretty much spot removal or bust here. Spot removal or essentially dead. Let's hope we find it. The opponent not going to force the issue. Um, What does that do? Let's just draw four cards, I guess. So we will go to combat with the drifters. Drift like this. We're going to straight up draw four here. Because we needed like a Doom Blade for this, and we've seen one, two Doom Blades. So we have a Doom Blade and two Disfigures to draw into. 
So we're gonna go like this, and yeah, we might draw Evancar's Justice as well. One, two, three, four, five. We won't be able to flash back Evancar's Justice, but we might be able to find an Archaeomancer to get it back at some point. There's a Disfigure. Okay. And there is our cam answer. So we'll disfigure this. We will run out our... Mm, let's leave up counter magic. Remember that time I got burned for not leaving up counter magic? Let's leave up counter magic. So we'll leave up counter magic, and then we'll lock them out of their draw step and kill them with Muldrifers. How about that? Opponent scoops it up. <laughs> we sure did. Okay, so elves, huh? Trivels, even complete disregard is probably good. I think that's it. So we'll just bring in three more removal spells. Secret Oracle, uh, Reaping the Graves probably gets a lot worse. Because if the game goes that long, we're at risk. We don't really need an Unearth. And I guess Edict's a little bit worse. Hey, welcome, So Cold 19. Welcome to the Jank Bank. Here we are, just trying to crack one out against elves. Uh, probably shouldn't have said crack one out. Probably a little bit. <laughs> like crack one out of the field, out of the ballpark. What do you guys think? Am I missing anything? I know <laughs> I know, I didn't take criticism very well last time, but I am always open to hearing suggestions. They do seem pretty hard on the uh, the non-creature spells, but I think i got to make one more cut here. And it might even just be like a Chittering Rats. I think eventually we'll get our lock down. Like the lock isn't super important here, so... I think I'll take out a Chittering Rats. We have so much hate for Elves here. I feel like we should be able to grind the game out, use our Seagate Oracles to block, get these guys back. So I'm going to go like that. Seagate Oracles notably can block Nettle Sentinels without dying, whereas Chittering Rats can't. Opponent going to be on the play as the Elves player, and we got some interaction, so I'm just going to straight up keep this. Yep. It's pretty much all we can hope for. Enough spot removal to help us survive. And I, th I will play my Tapland turn one. That doesn't really matter. I, it doesn't matter unless I have Virtual Rangers. There's an Edict. So yeah, we're just going to do what we do. Play Tapland. So this turn they're going to play something that matters. I'll disfigure it. And then... Okay, they're not going <laughs> to... Maybe they won't play something that matters. In which case, I guess I could disfigure this and backwater it. Or aqueduct it. Do you have a two drop that I care about? Query Ranger, that's a pretty good creature. I don't know if it warrants removal. We're, I don't think I am going to remove it. I think Timberwatch and Lizalana are just so much more important. And this doesn't get them to four mana next turn, so I'm just going to preordain here. Let's see if we can keep looking for... There's a Chittering Rats. We don't need the Flicker yet. We're going to bottom both of these. Just looking for interaction or land drops. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. So we'll have to bog here to avoid... I think I'm going to play on tap swamp. We might want to disfigure something here, and if we disfigure the thing that matters, and they play some one drops and we disfigure this and then wipe their board, we should be in good shape. No counter magic to fight through leads or anything, but... Yep. Gonna attack, sure. Mm-hmm. Imagine Ninja of the Deep Hours. <laughs> it is a good card. Yep. Is this lead the stampede before I can counter it? Spider Silk Armor. All right, so we're going to disfigure this in response because that gets pretty awkward. And uh, next turn we'll edict this, and we should be in okay shape. Shrivel is now a dead card. <laughs> I guess not with an Archaeomancer. That's interesting. So, uh, yeah, so we'll eat a Q. <laughs> and I guess we're only getting up to four mana next turn, so I might... No, we might draw one mana spell that I care about, so I'm going to bounce the Swamp, and uh, we'll pass the turn. All right, opponent. Can you rebuild? I wish Vanguard, sure. Play Dismal Backwater, we're going to leave up Complete Disregard for their Vanguard here, and then next turn we're going to cast a Mold Drifter. Unless, like, if they play, unless they play something else that matters. Um, well Wisher could matter. I actually think I'm going to kill uh, Well Wisher here. I know it sounds crazy. 
Actually, no, they don't have any other elves on board, so it doesn't really matter. Let's kill this. This can get way out of hand. So we draw. Mm, no sweepers. Um. I think I am going to Moldrifter here, and then next turn we might want to Archaeomancer back. Yeah, two shovels are pretty rad. Next turn we might want to Archaeomancer back a removal spell. Would have been awesome to leave up this counter magic for whatever shenanigans, but you got to do what you got to do. Opponent. No attacks, just passing. All right. Well, let's go. So play a land. We're a ghostly flicker away, gang. Go to combat. We're going to attack with Muldrifter. We'll run out Chainer's Edict. Yep. Sure. Going to tap. Attack with Muldrifter. I guess we are only on 15 minutes. Um, and then we will play out our Kaomancer, get back our removal spell, leave up counter magic for their potential. Um, mm, we're going to get back Edict. Actually, I'm going to Edict now. Ah, they just scoop it up. Okay, sweet. Uh, this is okay. It's not great because we can't cast this Chittering Rats on time, but we got the rest of our combo. Let's see if we can't go for a combo win. So we're going to keep. This hand's not bad enough. It's got a Mulder Fair in it. If things get real bumpy. This probably will get evoked on turn three, actually. So we'll Dismal Backwater and pass turn. Have a good sleep, Joel. Thanks for dropping by, man. We've had some good chats here tonight. Thank you for hanging out. I really appreciate it. All right, Preordain. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thank you. Um, let's continue having good games. Game counter is not very optimistic. Yeah. Oh, wait. Yeah. So that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> game counter didn't make any sense. So we draw Demir Aqueduct. Kind of awkward. Opponent on a blue deck. Let's see what they do with the prayer lane. Two cards on bottom. Okay. So we'll play an island, we'll pass the turn. They might play something we want to disfigure by cycling this lonely sandbar. Hopefully we get the wicked draw. <laughs> no problem. Okay, so our opponent, can a cantrip again? They're gonna brainstorm, okay. I feel like this is tribe. I only ever see tribe doing this whole dance. Most people wait till they got a Delver on board. <laughs> Love it, Popper, lol. Yes, sir. Popper times. And yeah, it just plays an island and they're gonna pass. So I, I feel like this is uh this is tribe. Find a counter spell, pretty great. Um we're just gonna keep playing islands. It'll allow us to leave up our counter spell this turn and next. We're okay with playing the long game against tribe. Haven't found a mountain or sorry, a swamp to commit this chittering rats. Man, it's hot in here. <laughs> Hey Shades, what's up? I'm just, I'm burning up out here. Opponents playing some Tireless Tribe. They got a Planes. They're going to try to force one through. I don't know, like, does does Tireless Tribe play hard counter? Um, so there's Tribe. We'll try to counter it. Hopefully they don't play hard counter. I feel like they only play Miscalculation. Or not Miscalculation. Um, the other one. <laughs> I guess today they are. Or are they going to gush? They can't find anything. They might have to spell. Just got out of bed right on. Well, good morning. I hope you're having an awesome morning out here. All right, our opponent can't fight through that. So we're going to... Hmm. Yeah, this is awkward. I think we're going to... We can hit Muldrifter next turn, and that just gives us such a good chance. If we evoke it here, what are we looking for? Like a removal spell for Tribe? Mm, that doesn't seem good to me. So I'm going to play Dismal Backwater. We'll pass the turn. Hopefully that Tireless Tribe was all they had going on. And next turn we'll cast a Mull Drifter and hopefully be able to run away with the game. Yeah, time zones, right? Well, good. Yeah, good morning. Welcome. Glad to have you. Three mana. Opponent going to transmute, looking for additional Tireless Tribes. So, yeah, so we're going to have to find a way to fight through that, obviously. Radiant Fountain, I mean, it's a start. Yeah, so we'll Radiant Fountain here. Play our Mole Drifter, hopefully find some answers for the Tireless Tribe. Opponent's going to crack. I wonder if they have a Daze. Do they play Daze? 
man, thank goodness they didn't have days. <laughs> and glad to see a preordain here. That's going to help us try to get out of that. Here comes Augur, maybe looking for something to defend tribe. No gush, okay. They're trying to find a whole whack of... Uh... Oh, that one. I can't believe I don't know what the name of the spell is. Going to have to see one. Probably going to see one next turn. A couple more cantrips aside for our opponent. They're still discarding hand size, which is nice. And we're going to make them have the Shadow Rift. Let's draw a removal spell. Muldrifter's fine too. Yeah, Circular Logic, that's it. So I'm going to bog them here. Um, we have Ghostly Flicker to recur the bog. And once bog is down, then we can resolve whatever spell we want. That spell is probably going to be Muldrifter even though I would quite like to remove this tribe. So actually, I'm going to preordain first. Let's see if we can find a removal spell. But either way, we should be all right here. There we go. Okay, so let's top both. I'm going to cast Edict first because it matters a little bit more. So we'll bog you. And Chainer's Edict. And so long as they don't have the win in hand, they can't Circular Logic here. I guess they would have to get a good number of cards in their graveyard. Maybe they can. We can't Ghostly Flicker in response, so... Just days. Oh, so they're going to be able to Circular Logic X2 here. Okay. So I guess it doesn't, we should pay for the days. So they at least have to counter the circular logic. Or counter with circular logic, that is. But it looks like they're going to be able to. And they might just have the win here. Don't know what that was. Opponent pitches an evolving wilds. We will pay one for days. And there's circular logic, x3. Or X2. Yep. And next turn we'll get to run it back with a Doom Blade. Hopefully they can't commit that many more cards <laughs> to their graveyard in the meantime. Alright, so I'm still going to make them have the Shadow Rift to win here. We'll pass. Um, They could. Gush is a crazy card. <laughs> They might not have a circular logic. I kind of always play against tribe like they have it all. That's just sort of my tribe strat. <laughs> so let's see. Got my chat out because it's a cantrip deck. Got to look pro, right? Come on, opponent. What have you? Gush would do it, yeah. Yeah, Gush is nuts. All right, let's see what they want to do. They're thinking through it. Maybe they have, they have like Shadow Rift, Inside Out, Gush, and that'd do it. So it's on you, opponent. Go for it. Just preordain. Okay, so I think we're safe. Since Doomblade can be countered by more of the cards. Yeah, they have Dispels and stuff, right? So cold. They have Dispels main deck. Also, welcome to the Jank Bank. I don't know if we've... Uh, <laughs> I don't know if we've been introduced. <laughs> so you'd use Doomblade first. Okay. And we will certainly oblige them by trying to Doomblade another one of these tribes. Bog in hand. So let's, let's try that a little bit. So we will... Yeah, so let's try to Doomblade a tribe. Leave up Ghostly Flicker. They let it go. Um, I don't want this off of the battlefield just yet, so I'm going to just play a land and... Yeah, I'm going to play a Mole Drifter because we don't have... I guess I could counter a Drifter here. Which wouldn't be too bad for them, but we're going to Drift. If we get rid of another circular logic, that's another circular logic they can't use to try to counter a removal spell on their tribe. 
and we get to draw a couple cards. So, frig yeah, drift away. Especially where we don't have any way to interact with them otherwise. Like, I guess Chittering Rats puts them down a card in hand. But I'm going to be mana efficient here, and hopefully I don't get burned for it. Let's see. There's a circular logic. Okay. No worries. It's one less circular logic to eat future cards. Yep. No universe where we can pay for that. So it's two circular logics out of the way, and they do run days, which is notable. Man, sure wish I had a few choking sands. Get rid of this bad boy. Augur, probably. Add a shoom. Nah, just gush. And Shadow Riff inside out. <laughs> Seven times four is 28. Is that it? GG's. Show it to me, opponent. Gush Shadow Rift inside out. They have all three. Shadow Rift. And inside out. Well, our opponent had a million circular logics, so that's it. They got us. Pretty uh pretty good draw for them. So nothing we could have done there. I guess we could have uh we could have theoretically like flickered the bog or something, but no. They got us. <laughs> we just got got. So Night Heal Spell Bombs come in. I feel like duresses are pretty okay in this matchup. Um, complete Disregard also pretty good here. Um, probably Dispels too. So we're just going to kind of try to get more efficient. Um, I think a couple of Counter Spells can come out. We want... Uh, maybe we do want those. Might take out some of our two-for-one creatures and just go like real hard control. Trittering Rats is actually surprisingly good here too. So I think all of these cards are actually good. I don't know which ones... I don't know how much we can cut for them. Unearth probably doesn't matter. We definitely want our Kaomancers. I can probably cut like a Chittering Rats. Um, I don't know that Echoing Decay will matter that much. We definitely want our Doom Blades. It's not that great, no. It's okay to like recur our removal spells. So I think Nihil Spell Bombs are the first thing we want to do because they can always draw into more stuff. So if we're like taking inside outs with duresses, we're kind of living on the edge. So I think those might be the last to come in. And I'll try to get a complete disregard in here and maybe a couple of dispels. Um, so I'll go down one counter spell for a dispel. And disfigure actually probably doesn't... No, disfigure is good. After they inside out, disfigure will still kill it. Um, I can take out one edict for the complete disregard. And... I might even go down a drifter. Like, we're just going to have to play real slow because I feel like all these sideboard cards are really good. Um, and I, if I could bring the duresses, then I would, but I don't know how good they actually are against them. I think I would have to run that matchup a few times. Reaping the Graves can get away with stuff, but I think a duress is better. And... Too slow to fight on the combo turn? All right, sweet. So we'll get rid of these, get duresses in, and get one of our Chittering Rats back. Do it like that. I feel you, man. 1-800-tight plays! Let's go. Low latency, saving me again. Um, This isn't awful, but it's pretty bad. I think I might mulligan this. Uh, but we're a 22 land deck. Like, it's so likely... It's not super likely. I'm discarding the hand size, potentially. So we're not doing anything for... No, this is too slow. Eh, not a lot better, but it's a little bit better. So I'll keep this. That's one thing I wish I could level up. It'd be mulligan decisions. I feel like it's kind of hard to, uh, to explain them. I think we just need more lands here. It's hard to deny a good counter spell. I think I'm going to keep this. Maybe our opponent will be off to a slow start. Yeah. Smoothing a counter lands. It's fine. I think so too. I think our opponent seems like they're they're on the full-on combo plan. I hope I didn't completely um, hamstring myself sideboarding, but we'll see. 
Good to see you, Maverick Girl. Proteus. I feel confident. You guys got my back. Let's go. <laughs> Let's take this match four. Go home positive. All right, opponent passes it back. There is the counter spell we knew about. So I don't think there's any reason to leave up um, Dispel here. So we're going to preordain. We might even hit an untapped island. Even That's a little awkward. We're going to keep Doomblade. We're going to keep both of these. We definitely want the next land as well. I'd rather commit a backwater here. So I'm going to go top and top. Commit the backwater. Pass the turn. Mm, so if they have oh okay sure um yeah so let's edict this away it gets it gets a little awkward like if they oh they might have days i guess we can't really play around days here um so we'll edict this away if edict is if anything is going to eat a days i'd rather it be edict and that will tie up their blue mana a little bit for next turn while we're trying to fight through a circular logic to kill a tribe. So we'll just pass. That went pretty well for us. <laughs> There's Tireless Tribe. Yep. So we should be able to get a get a Doom Blade through here. Hitting an untapped land would be pretty rad. Now I heal Spell Bomb. That's interesting. Mm, yeah, because they can always discard in response to spell bomb. So I'm going to Doomblade the tribe. And if they got circular logic days for the maximum rubbins, they're doing pretty well here. There's a dispel. We will dispel back. And we kind of gotta win this counter war. Nice. Okay. So our opponent's not going to kill us next turn. We can get this spell bomb down so that the rest of our spells matter. Opponent's going to get to enjoy a brainstorm fetch. Pretty tight. I think it might just be spell bomb, leave up counter spell next turn. Yep. Sure thing. Gonna gush. Hit their land drop. Ponder. My goodness, opponent's going off over there. Is their hand full again? <laughs> Back up to seven. Goodness. Pretty quick. They're not going to shuffle. Okay. So let's play a land. Play. No, I think I'm going to preordain and then I will. I'll leave up Counterspell playing around days um, on a potential tireless tribe, but I don't know. This could be sketchy. Secret Oracle is fine for next turn. Yeah, I think I want both of these. So we'll do this and pass. Like I said, leaving up counter magic, playing around days for when they commit their tribe or try to commit their tribe. We'll see what happens. How was your challenges, guys? How'd you guys make out? Did you run into this deck? How was your experience? That's like, that's the realness right there. Here comes Tireless Tribe. Maybe our opponent has hard counter. Wow, okay. Sure, a couple dispels aside, pretty good. Well then, gang, we sure have to hit a removal spell, huh? You didn't play yesterday, oh, okay. I think I saw, I don't know where it was, you were saying that, uh. that the meta felt a little bit softer to elves recently. So I'm going to Seagate Oracle here. That way, like I could draw, like I could get Disfigure off of this and then I could play Spellbomb to kind of quash their circular logic. But they just might logic the Spellbomb if they have multiple circular logics in hand. Yeah, so, but I, did I see that? There was a con happening this past weekend and I thought about going yesterday, but I ended up not. Oh, two swamps. This is not what we wanted to see. Um, all right, so let's try to run out the Nihil spell bomb here. Oh, okay. Oh, bummer. So you like, you couldn't go out at all. Dang. Well, still, hope you, uh, hope you had a good day regardless. Still. So what you were, you were mentioning the, uh, 
Oh, they have double circular logic? Okay. I did get some sick Planeswalker art and prints. Oh, man, which ones did you get? Oh, I saw those. Was that the, like, the Nyssa and the Elspeth? And they're, like, looking badass. Those are wicked. Hell yeah. Uh, campaign 9 for Circular Logic. So our opponent has multiple Circular Logics in hand, and I imagine maybe just another Gush for the Epic Rubbins. 2, 3, 4, 5. So we'll only be up to 6 mana next turn. Oh my goodness, Gush. <laughs> Shadow Rift inside out? Don't. Don't, opponent. Okay, they're going to Brainstorm. Thank goodness. Oh, they haven't made their land drop, though, have they? So they'll get to make their land drop, and they could still get it here. Yeah, those are sweet, man. Good pulls. Good pulls. Here comes, gang. Here comes the story of when the Tireless Tribe had it all. The double the spells, man. Oof. That was a beating. They're like, does my opponent have the dispel? Yeah, those are sweet. So what were you talking about? Like the about the meta being kind of like a little soft to elves right now. That's really interesting. Like I would always think their bad matchups would be these like blue black decks, but what are, like what what are your best matchups? What are elves' best matchups? Tribe either looks unstoppable or unplayable. Yeah, here it comes. Here comes the unplayable version. <laughs> well, me must good opponent. <laughs> You just, like, you, it's a combo deck, right? So, play versus elves, but that didn't happen. They're a combo deck, so if, they, if they've if they got it, they've got it, basically. Like, you can, I try to do everything I could to play around their spells. They kind of had a clutch um, dispel back there that just completely ruined me. Maybe there was some top decking I shouldn't have done, but I figure this deck kind of has to play as if the game is going to go longer. Like, we have to find opportunities to like find cards off of Seagate Oracles where they're just finding the cards they're looking for with Shadow Rifts and Inside Outs and Gushes, like cards that are just really synergistic. Like honestly, it's kind of a beautiful thing. <laughs> Nothing we can do. Opponent gets in and that's how you get tribed, gang. Um, This is way too awkward. We got enough cantrips in our deck. Like this, oh man, it doesn't do anything. If we don't draw the right combination of lands we're just screwed we have to draw one more land and it's a mold of four <laughs> and we have to draw the right land and it's a mold of five so i think i think i'm gonna ship this it's not a lot better but it's that makes it a lot better okay so we'll top a seagate oracle and we'll let our opponent go first we can also doom blade really early like if this is elves or something scargan Wow, just raw dog and the Skurg and Pit Skulk out there. It's brave. Um, I think I'd rather disfigure than preordain. So I'm going to cast a swamp here. I'm going to play a swamp. And by that I mean if I just draw it off the top of my deck next turn, I want to cast the disfigure before I aqueduct. It's stampy, getting stamped. Here they come. BT, BT, BT. Here comes four BTs. So lucky. You guys ready? How many BTs? Taking bets. <laughs> Just one BT. That that was weird. I feel like sandbagging the Pitskulk is pretty worth. Maybe they've got some uh it's got some Kavus in there. Disfigure. Drifty boy. I don't really have to Doomblade any of this stuff, so I'll pick this up. Secret Oracle is gonna be a house here, obviously. Um, leaving up Doomblade for Ranker would have made sense, but they'll have to top deck it for that to be an issue. What's up, Gelatin Factory? <laughs> wow, you. Here it comes. Here comes the Wow, you tree. Friggin' <laughs> Metamorphose Ninja the Deep Hours. <laughs> Get wrecked. <laughs> I'm always I'm always playing around Metamorphose, honestly. What is what video clip? Uh oh. Did I meme? Did I did I meme and not know I was memeing? Um, yeah, so we're just gonna run out of Seagates. They're just they're good here. Like I said, we don't really they're not playing enough creatures where Rancor really matters that much. Turner Rats about to get awesome. So we'll get a Turner Rats down. <laughs> what video clip playing? <laughs> oh, Stonewall Jackson over here. Mm-hmm. Never not blocking this pit skulk. 
Did this Seagate Oracle trades with a pump spell? What is going on, man? What is this? Opponent plays another land. Pitskulk. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's Stranger Things. So Stranger Things is this show um, about things that are strange. <laughs> and those are the kids. That's supposed to be the kids from Stranger Things being stoked about your follow. Um, I don't see why I would kill. I guess they could have vines here. So that may be a reason that I shouldn't just point a Doomblade at this. I feel like their hand is almost bad enough that I should run out Swamp Chittering Rats here. Um, but if they're going to waste a Vines protecting this where I'll have... Maybe I just play a two-powered attacker that can block this. And then it won't really matter as much. Chitter for sure. Yeah. I think their hand's bad enough. It just makes sense. Okay. So we'll chitter away. Mm, oh yeah, no, that's yeah. Opponent probably not super happy about that, especially if their hand's shaping up real funny. Like, all right, so they will top. Yeah, I'm a big fan of that show. Can't say it too many times because you know, copy struck. Although those kids, they can have my money. They're nice kids. <laughs> They're strange ER. The the Michael Crichton Stranger Things crossover Strange ER where the kids solve not only mysteries, but they also resuscitate people in a dramatic fashion in a in an ER setting. Great show. Oh, that's some awkward stomping right there. That is some awkward stomping right there. I do think it's almost time to kill the thing, though. So let's, let's Oracle. Probably want to leave up black here. Let's Oracle, see if we can't find untap land or... Oh, there's a bunch of tap lands, actually. And... Dismal Backwater. Pass the turn. <laughs> Not enough to justify this draw. Um, yeah. Almost enough that if they play another one, I'm, like, feeling worse for them than I have for an... Oh, dude. That... That's just savage. Elephant Guide's not bad for them here. That's a 5-5. Five five. I'm going to have to kill it. And then they'll have a 3-3, three three, which poses a challenge. Yep, can't block it. So if they have vines here... We have two Muldrifters. We're at 10, though. There's rats. Okay, so we will... Chitter. Resolves. They put a card back on top. So they'll be Hellbent. We'll want to respond to their vines if they cast it here. And we'll kill this. They get an elephant, but it doesn't really matter. We've got enough blockers now. One, two, three, four, five. What does seven mana do next turn? I guess seven mana lets us play another removal spell with our mold drifter. So we'll do this and pass. So I'm going to draw whatever it was. I'm assuming it. Oh my god, it was another land. Dude, the savagery is unmatched. <laughs> They're going to attack with the elephant. Okay, so let's trade a rats with their elephant or an, or an oracle. Just got two for one by a green card, which is interesting. Yep. So Seagate Oracle goes away. We get to keep our chittering rats. That is, that sucks really bad for them. I feel like we weren't on a fast enough draw to, like, punish them either. One, two, three, four, five. So we will Mull Drifter. We're not leaving up Counterspell mana, but I don't know how relevant that is. Counterspell would obviously just be savage, but... Yep. All right, so our opponent scoops it up. That was, that sucks for them, man. We'll go up to 50-50 again. Uh, complete disregards probably okay here. We're gonna want our dispels over our regular counter spells probably for their vines and hungers and stuff. So we'll bring in a dispel. Echoing decay is probably not super good. I don't think the game's gonna go long enough. That reaping the graves is gonna matter. Let's get another dispel in here, and we might we might want complete disregard over something. Probably unearth because they're not gonna be interacting with our combo anyway. And I think that's good enough. I can't. Think of anything else I could justify taking out for these duresses. I think Decay seems great, too. I am I am on the Decay team here. 
But yeah. Yeah, no, this, this looks good. I think this is how I want to do it. What do you guys think? Can we justify anything else? Yeah, like trade trade one of our oracles, get it back with Unearth. Or like trade a Chittering Rats, get it back with Unearth. I guess you're right. What'd you take out? Like a Drifter? A three drop? Is Dispel worse than I'm giving it credit for? <laughs> I'm totally down to bring it back in. Um, yeah, what would you take out? I'm, I'm okay cutting a mall drifter, but like Dr. Benzie Gibbs, man, here in your Benzie box. What's up? Yeah, I think, I think it's going to be drifter. I don't think we have to resolve that many of them to win. So I'm okay with that. We could have just removed all their creatures. Did I submit? No, I didn't. I almost submitted with 61 cards. <laughs> hey man, you got a, uh, you got Mikey Ruru out there doing way more than that with blue black. So I, they, he has a bunch of tutors in that deck and stuff like that though. So <laughs> Dr. Benzie Gibbs here, here to bring it straight from your Benzie box. This has precisely enough removal that I'm going to keep it. Yep. I don't know about the turn one Skargon Pit Skull. Maybe that's just something they're trying out. Forest. Nettle Sentinel, sure. Lands would be awesome here. Um, I'm not going to try to preordain. I'm just going to play Baron more. It's obviously real, real slow, but playing that weird draw into an untapped black source game, probably not what I want to be doing. And I think we're going to leave up Doomblade next turn. I think here they're going to want to attack with Nettle Sentinel, commit a Scargan Pit Skulk, and like a Vault Scourge, maybe. If I know Stompy Draw when I've seen it. <laughs> so that's what I assume is going to happen here. Um, but where they know what we're on, they might do something that's a little bit more proactive against removal. Manamorphos Ninja the Deep Hours, here it comes. And we already drew our one Mole Drifter, so I'm happy. Good cuts, gang, good cuts. Ledge Walker, huh? Well, this is going to eat a Doom Blade pretty much right away. So that hopefully we can Edict this eventually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's a good card to have against us. I guess it's not super great because we have mole drifters, but... I'm going to leave up... Mm, no, I think I should just kill Nettle Sentinel with it this turn. Uh, not hitting land drops? Not ideal. Yeah, so let's do this now, just in case they, uh, they want to kick a Vines when we try to do it on their turn. It's obviously not perfect... I'm like leaving it up to hopefully, but they'll just cast a ranker on this and then it wouldn't matter anyway. If they like ranker for this, vines for this, then like whatever. Here comes some pants. Solana pants walker. Yep. Pants away, opponent. Double pants. Ah, oh, queer ranger. Get out of here. Ruining my fun. I want to Doomblade this. Or I want to, I want to Chainer's Edict this. Yep. Gonna get in that awkward spot where Stompy's just wrecking my face and I'm missing land drops. So let's try to preordain into a land drop. We're gonna to want to remove this before we Edict because we have answers that can kill this that can't kill this. Um, finding Disfigure here might be a reason to like leave a land drop for a turn uh, i feel like not hitting my land here is just suicide so i'm gonna that's that's probably too slow too though <laughs> like if i just keep this to complete disregard um mm. it's kind of like looking a gift horse in the mouth you know What else could I hope for? Doom Blades, Disfigure. Basically like top decking Disfigure and them not having a creature. Otherwise complete disregard is kind of like towards the plan we're going for, so I'm gonna keep it. Of course we'll top the land, play Dismal Backwater, pass. So yeah, looking a little bumpy. It's 22 land decks, man. I hate it when this happens when like Shrivel looks really good in a matchup and then <laughs> You bring it in and they're on like all nest invaders and burning tree emissaries. All right, we've got outs. 
Not great ones, but we have outs. <laughs> that right there is a boggled up ledge walker. And the outs we're playing to is like still them not having creatures. I don't and they probably they'll probably just commit another one next turn and we'll be like in deep crap. But let's let's hope and pray. Dusty Springfield, be with us. So we're gonna do that there. Kicked vines kills us. So if it's kicked vines, we'll call it a day. Well, they're playing around Edict real good. But it is kind of our out. Especially where this has trample now. So what are we gonna do? We gotta have like I don't think we can top deck anything that deals with this. Yep. Mmm. Aqueduct, definitely not what we were looking for. So we edict, they sack this, we can't commit a flyer to kill it. Ghostly Flicker doesn't do anything here. We're dead. Right? Right. I guess we can like edict them, they may misclick. <laughs> Misclick. <laughs> ah, dang it. All right, we're dead. So, Shrivel looked pretty hot there. But I still don't think it's worth it. I think we gotta hit our land drops. I heal spell bombs for... That was what I was doing, like, back when I started playing Popper. I would bring in, like, Graveyard Hate for rankers and stuff. And I guess not enough people are playing Young Wolf for that to matter. So I'm happy with our sideboard decisions. We just didn't draw off lands. Yep. Playing first. Cutting it close here, gang. Cutting it close for that 50-50 <laughs> really loud window sounds <laughs> win. Um, I am going to keep this. No, I'm probably not. Emicar's Justice is good, though. It's probably not good enough to keep this hand, though. Mm, yeah, let's mulligan. <laughs> Deck. Bud. Deck. Bud. I only have one Radiant Fountain in my deck. <laughs> oh, frig. So we'll top a Swamp. We got a redraw. Uh, that was bad. They're on six at least, I guess. So we'll Radiant Fountain. <laughs> yeah. That was a little rough. Not a good way to end it out, but... I probably could have kept that first hand... It was still really slow and probably kind of bad, but it is what it is. Quirion Ranger? Just the, the raw pit skull, okay? Eh? Well, we'll edict that anyway. Going down. Pass, and let's just hope they don't have any more action. Here comes the action. <laughs> Another ledge walker, BTE, okay. Not the end of the world, that's just the first BTE. We can we can recover from this. We can survive the first BTE. Okay, opponent, you just chill out now. It's a fair few little creatures. Um, yeah, so we're gonna have to Oh man, Vault Scourge. We're gonna have to hit our land drops and find our Evancar's Justice real quick. So we're attacking for five all time. No blue mana. Ugh. Good old Mold of Fives. <laughs> Mold of Fives and to keep him with a Radiant Fountain. It ain't over till it's over. <laughs> Precariousness intensifies. <laughs> so here they come, getting in for a jillion. Functionally a jillion. And uh, Pipskull. One, two, three, four, five... Six, seven, eight, nine damage next turn. Yeah, 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 yeah. Goes to combat, swings. Sure. This figure this. Takes six. Opponent gets a ranker back. They don't recast it. Um, that's sweet. So we'll change to you. Who knows, gang? Who knows? <laughs> Fighting the good fight out here. <laughs> Come on. Top deck removal spells all day, all night. Taking six. Vines for the win. Vines FT dub. Here it comes. No vines. But we're dead anyway. Well, we fought the good fight, guys. But it looks like 
when you mull the five, you lose the match. So that's it.